Miss Chiori? <sighs> Your talk with the investor sure went fast. The Aquabus hasn't even arrived yet. Oh? And who are they? Ah, uh, allow me to introduce you. This is the Traveler and Paimon. Pleased to meet you. Likewise! We've heard the owner of Chiori Ya Boutique is a skilled seamstress. So it's a real pleasure to finally meet you in person! Why, thank you. I strove to create an outfit that matched her high social station as the Demoiselle. So tell me, what happened? I can tell the conversation didn't go quite as expected. Ah, well, it's like this. I know, I know, Chiori, you don't have to say it. You did remind me that this investor was a little bit sketchy. Yes, there's no doubt about that. But how could I pass it up? <laughs> he offered me twice as much as the others. And therein lies the problem. Yes, but just put yourself in my shoes. After obtaining such an excellent script, it's only natural that I would want to make the most of the film. The budgets that the others had proposed were nowhere near enough. It's difficult to find someone willing to front such a large amount of Mora, so... Don't be sad, Xavier. We might be able to help scrounge up some more together for you. Oh, thank you, Paimon. That means a lot to me. But the cost of the film is staggering. I'm afraid that any Mora we can scrounge together in a short amount of time won't even be able to cover the actor's fees. We need to move on. What's happened has already happened, and there's no changing it. But now's not the time to give up. What? You're saying that you have a plan? No, that's not what I mean. I'm simply saying I wouldn't give up just yet. The actors I recommended aren't just after Mora, after all. <laughs> Then where do you live? We Malazines live in Marysee Village. The only way to enter is from underwater. Oh, you must be pretty tired after work every day, right? I mean, you have to swim all that way just to go home. You're so thoughtful. But some Malazines choose to live in the Court of Fontaine because it's so much more convenient. This is our stop. Oh, we've arrived, but I haven't even finished chatting with Abel yet. I also enjoyed Abel's introductions to Fontaine along the way. Everything you described was so clear and detailed that we can't help but want to hear more. Thank you so much. I'm usually working here on this aqua bus, so I hope I'll have the chance to see you again. There are still many more places I'd like to introduce to you. <laughs> Welcome to the Court of Fontaine. <sighs> Chiori, you sure have changed a lot. This is the first time we've seen you since you left Inazuma. 
I haven't realized it's been so long. I was in such a rush when I left that I didn't even get to say goodbye. Thank you for extending the invitation, Mr. Xavier. I'm looking forward to a fruitful trip here in Fontaine. Ugh, it's an honor to have the head of the Kamisato clan visit us. So they are who you meant when you said you had actors coming from Inazuma? Oh? It's the Traveler and Paimon! Wow, what a coincidence! Ayaka and I were just talking about you on the way here! Are you also here for the film? We just ran into Xavier earlier and came over with him. <laughs> but I'm not an actress. Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka are the real actors here. I'm just tagging along with Ayaka to have a good time together. Uh, about that, I mean, how was I supposed to contact you when I was making preparations for the film? I figured you were probably busy and I didn't want to disturb you. So I could only keep you in the back of my mind while I sought other actors to play the lead roles in the film. <laughs> I had been thinking about a surprise reunion with you during our trip here, but you still managed to surprise me first. Oh, so you all know each other already! <laughs> My, what a coincidence! What are the chances everyone could be brought together here like this? Why don't we go to Hotel de Boer and catch up over a meal? I've already made a reservation! Huh? Did you reserve two spots for us, too? Yes, of course, of course. I'll be sure to tell the boss to serve a few more delicious dishes just to make sure there'll be enough food. Very well. Then please, kindly lead the way, Mr. Xavier. Fontaine are so tall. Just look at how big they are. And there's the fountain that Aval mentioned earlier. It really is a magnificent sight. And look at that huge spinning sphere. Where does it get its power? <gasps> Wait a sec. Could it be one of those clockwork mecha we've heard so much about? This is what food from Fontaine is like. It sure is different from what we have in Inazuma. How should I describe it? It seems like you have to go through a lot more uh, steps to make them. And the flavor has many layers too. 
Ah, yes. When I first went to Inazuma, I actually thought the food there tasted a little too bland. It took some time for me to get used to it. Let's get back to the purpose of this trip for a moment, shall we? How have preparations for the film been coming along, Mr. Xavier? Well, I've already assembled most of the film crew. A lighting specialist, a prop manager, and a costume designer. I've also bought the copyrights from the novel's author. Oh, it's called The Two Musketeers, right? I read the script you sent me on the way here. The story is pretty good. Originally, I was planning to start filming as soon as Sir Kamisato and Lady Ayaka arrived in Fontaine, but, uh, I'm afraid I've run into a bit of a problem. Oh? What is it? It has to do with the film's investor, Mr. Morris. He suddenly informed me this morning that he's encountered some financial trouble and will be unable to release to me the amount of funding agreed upon. It's said that Fontaine's legal system is well developed. If he has violated the contract, then can't you simply take him to court over the matter? Ah, well, I'm still more concerned about filming. Even if I were to take him to court, I'm afraid it would take months before the case could even be heard. Then, is there a way we could raise funds ourselves to solve the problem? I've considered that option too, but unfortunately it's difficult to gather such a large amount of mora on such short notice. Besides, we have to consider the film festival's submission deadline. Hmm. Mr. Xavier, if Ayaka and I were willing to perform for free, would that resolve the problem you are currently facing? What? Uh, no, out of the question! To have you come all this way just to act for free? Oh, no, 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 that won't do. There's no need to worry, Mr. Xavier. My brother and I had actually intended to work for free after receiving your invitation. Inazuma has only recently reopened its borders, and needs to strengthen its relations and cultural ties with other nations. We didn't have many collaboration projects with Fontaine in the past, so we hope this trip would serve as a good start for the future. Indeed. You could say that's the real reason why the Ashiro Commission agreed to come to Fontaine. I understand, but having you two act for free just doesn't seem right. Not at all. While we're officially here to conduct a cultural survey of sorts, we must express our sincerity if we want to establish formal cultural ties with your nation. This film will serve as proof of friendly cooperation and cultural exchange between Inazuma and Fontaine. It's my hope that the film can be finished and released as smoothly as possible. If you still don't feel comfortable with this arrangement, I would also be more than happy to be introduced to some other renowned individuals in Fontaine's literary and artistic circles. Uh, uh, all right, I'll do as you say. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll make sure to cobble together enough Mora now, even if it means selling my house, my camera, and every single family heirloom. Come on now, no need to go that far. I'll also help you out as a brand sponsor. Me too! Even though I didn't bring much more to spend on this trip, it's still better than nothing. Uh, you are too kind, all of you. I... I really don't know how to... <laughs> Ugh, ew. Alright, enough about that. Now that we have Xavier's savings, my support, and two leads who are willing to act for free, I think we will be able to make this happen. So, instead of Mora, you'll help with filming and production. Oh, but how can we help with that? We don't know much about making a film. Alright, pull yourself together, Xavier. Tell us if there are still any open positions left among the crew. Uh, oh, uh, all right. Uh, let me think. We still need a camera operator, a clapper loader, and someone to manage logistics. I originally wanted to personally serve as director, but I've been too busy working as the producer. So the positions of director and director's assistant will also need to be filled. Paimon knows what the director and the logistics support person do, but what's a clapper loader? 
The clapper loader is responsible for using the clapper board to record and organize the information of each shot. When the camera operator begins shooting, the work requires both patience and careful attention to detail. A clapper board? <gasps> oh, you mean the thing they hold that goes clap whenever they start filming? Yes, that's right. Are you interested in that job? For sure! Pyron's always wanted to try that! Alright, then you'll be our clapper loader. I can find someone from the store to help with logistics. What do you think, Xavier? Oh, fine by me. As for our camera operator, I was thinking of letting the Traveler take the role. Oh, she's great when it comes to using a camera! Pyron can't even count how many things we've taken photos of during our journey! Yes, that's also what I was thinking. I noticed the Traveler had an eye for photography and composition when we worked together previously. I'm sure that's due to the Traveler's journey across Devat and all the places they've seen. After so many adventures, using a camera must be second nature by now. What do you say, Traveler? Are you interested in the job? Thank you, it really means a lot to me. Come on, friend. Let me give you a big warm hug. So, all that's left for us to find is a director and an assistant. Oh, me, me, me! I want to be the director's assistant. All we need to do is help the director, right? I can handle that. All right, then all we need is a director. Oh, all the well-known directors in Fontaine are probably also busy working on their own films these days. I'm not sure who will have time to help. Farina helped out a theater troupe recently by serving as an artistic consultant. She could be a good director, right? Besides, it's not like she has anything else to do right now. Farina? Uh, do you really think Lady Farina would be willing to help us with our humble project? <laughs> Isn't that the name of Fontaine's Hydro Archon? My brother has already informed me about what happened here in Fontaine. Yep, that's her! She helped out a theater troupe not too long ago, and now she's taking up work as a director! Well, uh... Oh, I saw that musical. Her performance was perfect, and the storyboards were also excellent. Don't let her form or identity intimidate you. She's the best candidate we can think of right now. You'll never know until you give her a shot. Fine, you're right, Chiori. I'll do anything for the sake of my film, anything! Oh, then I'll have to ask the Traveler and Paimon to show me the way to Lady Farina's residence. I just hope she'll agree to help. Do you need us to also come along? No, there's no need to trouble you with this. Besides, you've just arrived in Fontaine, and I'm sure there are many places you would like to visit. Just leave this task to me. It's part of my duties as the producer. Very well. Then we'll be waiting to hear the good news. I'll go with you. By the way, you might want to consider bringing a gift. And don't worry, we won't simply drop you off at Farina's place. We know Farina pretty well by now, so having some familiar faces there should help your chances. Besides, the whole thing was our idea in the first place. All right, then I'll start making preparations. As for the gift... Hmm... A gift for someone who is once seen as the Hydra Oricon. I wonder what she would like. I recall that Lady Farina once fancied a clockwork ring. So perhaps I should get another exquisite clockwork contraption for her. Huh? Can't we just bring some desserts, like the Fontanelia Mousse? Wouldn't that be a little too cheap? She does like desserts, though. Isn't the Fontanelia Festival happening right now? I heard Abel tell us on the Aquabus that Farina introduced the tradition of going door to door and asking for sweets. To do something like that, she must have a real sweet tooth. I agree with Yoimiya. If the gift is too fancy, it might actually make her feel more uncomfortable. But will that really be enough? We'll be asking her to do a lot of work, you know. Hmm, 
You're right. We need to further sweeten the deal. Huh? You want something even sweeter than Fontanelia Moose? Yes. We'll need a gift that's sweeter than any dessert in the world. But what could that be? <laughs> Your words of praise. want to go traveling. I don't mind where we go, as long as I have my friends with me. <laughs> Go ahead. No need to worry about us. Oh, I hope Farina will like the gifts we prepared. Oh, and if you still think we should get something else for her, just let me know. I should be able to make some fireworks. <laughs> Looking forward to the good news. Um, what did you want, exactly? <laughs> oh! Uh, uh, 
Sorry, this is where Farina lives. Okay, I'll go knock on the door. before afternoon tea. Uh -huh. Who are you? <clears throat> Lady Farina, please allow me to introduce myself. I am Xavier, a film director. Hello. Oh, is that the traveler in Paimon I see behind you? And who's this? I'm Chiori. Ah, the one from Chioria Boutique. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, what are you all doing here? Uh, do you need something? Did you just get up, Farina? It's already past noon, you know. Huh? Oh, I... Uh, Paima means the weather is so nice in the afternoon and the sun is so warm. Just like how you make us feel. Sleeping in late is a really smart idea. <laughs> Uh, no. I was just up late last night reading some novels. Uh, what does sleeping in have to do with the weather? <clears throat> this is a small gift we've prepared for you, Lady Farina. We hope you like it. No need to be so formal. I'm just a regular person like everyone else now. Oh, is this Fontanalia Moose? <laughs> it's one of my favorites! That's great! So, actually, there's something we need your help with. Given your renowned passion and understanding of drama, I would like to ask that you serve as the director of our film crew. Oh, but didn't you just say that you're a director? Yes, but for this particular project, I'm mainly working as a producer. Besides, I'm sure that your understanding of the performing arts far surpasses my own, Lady Farina. Are the Traveler and Paimon also part of the film crew? Yep, we sure are! Paimon's the clapper loader and she's the camera operator! Camera operator? That can be a pretty technical job, and it directly affects the final quality of the film. Are you really up to it? No, I'm not questioning your abilities. It's just that I've never really seen you use a camera before. Maybe you can come up with a test for the Traveler and see for yourself! If she can satisfy you with her camera skills, then you'd have nothing to worry about and can join the team! What do you say? Uh, you sure are getting better at rolling with the situation, Paimon. Hmm... Oh, I do wish to see how skilled the Traveler really is with a camera. Alright, how about this? We'll work with what we have. I'll give you some scenarios and see if your work is up to my standards. Good. It's essential for the camera operator to understand the director's vision. I'll make my decision after seeing your work. Are you ready? I have high standards, you know. Sure. You can come back once you've reviewed the basics of film composition and feel ready. Ready? I have high standards, you know. Okay, grab the camera and I'll give you a scenario.
have more skill than I thought. All the shots had a great composition, and I could really feel a connection to the characters and their lines. Yeah! Does that mean you agree to be our director, Farina? <laughs> Did you think I would agree just like that? After our performance of the Little Oceaned, I've begun to make a name for myself again, you know. In fact, I've already had several troops approach me for the Fontanalia Film Festival. Unfortunately, the scripts were all pretty boring and didn't pique my interest. If others were to find out I agreed to work with you so easily, then, well... Hey, but didn't we have a deal? What else do we need to do to convince you, Farina? Uh, well, what about the pay? Huh? You know, how much you're willing to pay me to be the director? The pay is also an important factor for me to consider, you know. Well, uh, I can offer you this much? What? That's all? If Nervulet were to hear of this, he could charge you with underpaying your labor. I'm sorry, but our crew is in a tight financial spot at the moment. I see. Well, even though it's highly unlikely now that I'll join your crew, there's still something I'd like to ask. Exactly what film are you planning to make? Oh, uh, our script is an adaptation of The Two Musketeers. Huh? Wait, you mean the suspense thriller novel that was a number one bestseller? Oh, so Farina's read it too. Of course I read it. I've always had a keen interest in artistic works that strike a chord with the populace. I see. It all makes sense now. You must have used most of the budget to pay for the copyright. Uh, not really. The novel's author transferred the copyright to me practically for free once he heard that I wanted to make a film adaptation of the story. The lack of budget is due to another issue. He probably just wants to get his name out there. So, Mora isn't the most important thing to him right now. It reminds me of a delivery courier who wears one of my designs while traveling all across Tavat. I didn't charge her much for the outfit either. The exposure she provides for my brand is well worth it. Uh... So, are you a big fan of this story, Farina? Well, uh, it's all right. The pacing of the story is good, but the character relationships could use some work. When I was reading it before, I always felt like some things were left on a rather unsatisfactory note. I have high standards, you know. Ahem, Mr. Xavier, if, hypothetically speaking, I agree to be the director, how much freedom would I have in terms of script revisions and creative interpretation? Oh, oh, as much freedom as you would need. I wouldn't dare doubt the tastes of Fontaine's greatest star. Good. Then I'm free to alter the script as I see fit. Absolutely no problem. seems that your crew really can't go on without my care and direction. So, you agree? Yes, I agree. Although the pay is well below what someone of my caliber deserves. A great script calls for a great director. I mustn't let a perfectly good story be ruined due to lack of funds. If you have fine cheese and bread, you wouldn't just let it sit on the counter and get moldy just because you lack an oven, right? Oh, Hydro Archon above! I'm not dreaming, am I? Somebody pinch me. 
there's no more Hydro Archon, you know. And it's still a little early to celebrate. There's a lot that goes into shooting a film. Although the trickiest tasks of finalizing the script and casting the actors have already been taken care of, we'll still need to reserve filming locations. Not to say set up lighting and props. And uh, by the way, since we'll be filming The Two Musketeers, we'll need to find an action choreographer. Ideally, a professional who has actual experience with muskets. Yes, I've thought about this as well. I was hoping that you might know someone who could handle the job. Me? Hmm. If this was before, I could have simply asked Lorand. But it's already been some time since I last talked to her. Navia can also use firearms, but unfortunately, her style is quite different from that of the characters in the story. Could we ask the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol? Oh, you mean the Special Patrol's Musketeers? Yes, that's right. They work with muskets every day. I can't think of anyone more qualified than them. They would be under Nervilet's jurisdiction. Unfortunately, I, uh, don't have any connection with them at all. Hmm, so... In the end, we still have to start by talking to Nervalette. No need to go to all that trouble. I know their Captain Chevras. Oh, you do? Wait, Chiari, how do you know the Captain of the Special Patrol's Musketeers? No particular reason. Running a business means dealing with some trouble from time to time, and she's helped me out on a few occasions. In return, I've helped her handle a few situations in which the Special Patrol couldn't get involved directly. So, we've gotten to know each other over time. Uh, so you're saying there's been times when the Special Patrol needed a fashion designer to handle a situation? Her work is becoming more and more mysterious. It'd be best to keep it that way. Anyway, enough about that. What do you all think about asking the Captain to be our musket action choreographer? She sounds professional enough. She is a Captain, after all. <laughs> I have no objections. But I imagine the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol must be busy with their duties. Do you think she'd really have time to help with shooting a film? And then there's the issue of pay. Well, it just so happens that she's also not the kind of person that's just after Mora. As for whether she has time, I'll have to go and ask her first. Then I'll leave that to you. Macaroni's on sale today, so I've got to go. You can just tell me how things went when we discuss tomorrow's plan later. No problem. <laughs> Having Farina join feels like a big boost to our team! Of course. Just wait until the day of our premiere. You'll witness the true power of my name in these lands. <laughs> You'll be so glad I agreed to help. I can guarantee that even the standing tickets will be sold out. I'll be sure to ask some people I know to see if they'd be willing to act as extras. <laughs> Seems like you're finally getting more comfortable with your own reputation now. I didn't ask for the Clapper Loader's commentary, Paimon. Then let's get going. I happen to know where Chevrus is today. By the way, I'm curious. If my pay is so low, then what about our two lead actors? Didn't they travel here all the way from Inazuma? Actually, they told us that they see the trip as part of a cultural exchange, so they didn't ask for any pay. What? So is every person into that who doesn't want money gathered here to shoot this film? Don't tell me Chiori isn't being paid either. <laughs> I already knew Xavier from before, and he's also agreed to give my brand some good exposure. It seems the gods have really smiled upon you, Xavier. And that certainly doesn't include me, mind you.
This one's got your name on it! My time with the Spinas taught me that carrying an unreliable weapon is worse than not carrying one at all.
Spina di Rosula's logo. It was designed. Alright, this is the place. Hmm. But where's the captain? There's hardly anyone around here. She's over there. The one with an eye patch reading in front of the newsstand. Oh, her! Paimon could tell there was something different about her. She seems kinda intimidating. Please wait here for a moment. I'll go fetch her. She's working now, so you might not want to get in her way. Working? But isn't she just standing there and reading a novel? Just trust me. Oh! Alright, let's see what happens then. Chiori sure is a mysterious person. She claims just to be a fashion designer, but she knows all these powerful people. The Court of Fontaine isn't particularly tolerant of visitors from overseas, so it isn't easy for a foreigner to promote their brand here. Even more so in the competitive world of fashion. Even a local like me just trying to make a film has to face all kinds of challenges. So I can only imagine what Chiori has been through to get where she is today. I'm sure that having more connections has definitely worked in her favor. Reading on the job? detective novel. One main character? No. Multiple. Branching storylines. I see. How's the plot coming along? One of the main characters is about to make a choice that will affect the rest of his life. I'd wager he's going to make the wrong choice. <sighs> anyway, to speed things up, there's something I need your help with. You know that doesn't depend on me. It all comes down to what the character chooses. Which is exactly why I'm here to help. <sighs> All right. It appears he made the wrong choice in the end. Halt! Huh? What's going on? Hand over whatever you're holding. Oh, it's just a book. I didn't buy anything else. Then I'm sure you wouldn't mind letting me have a look. Excuse me, officer. I don't mind you standing around here, not purchasing anything. But I'd prefer if you didn't disturb my customers. It's bad for business, you know? Don't give me that act. You won't be able to get off so easily either. I am Chevras, Captain of Fontaine's Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I will say this one last time. Hand over whatever you're holding at once. And before you do anything unwise, let me remind you that I'll have you on the ground before you can even think about making a run for it. Uh, all right, all right. I'll give it to you. But please let me say something first. If there's any contraband in that book, then the shopkeeper here is the one who slipped it in. I don't have anything to do with this. Why, you trying to leave me on the hook, huh? You were the one who said you wanted it. Save it for the interrogation room. Take them away, Letelier. What's going on here? One second you're reading a book and the next you're escorting people away! 
And who are... Oh! Aren't you the traveler who's been all over the papers recently? Chiori, I'm assuming what you wanted to ask me about has to do with them, right? Ah, maybe I can let you in on what's happening then. Now that Vache has been brought to justice, no new shipments of synth will be made and distributed to sellers. The Fontaine guards have been busy collecting the remaining synths still circulating on the market. Thanks to a tip from our reliable source here, this should be the very last batch. Oh, so you are pretending to read a book in order to catch the bad guys! Oh, Paimon almost forgot to introduce ourselves. Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler and Xavier! Hey, I'm Chevraz. You probably already heard me introduce myself, so I won't bother repeating it. Yeah, why didn't you make a move as soon as you had the chance? Were you worried that my intel wasn't accurate? No, I wanted to see if the shopkeeper would turn himself in first. All he had to do was come up to me and say that he didn't know where the synth had come from. If he did that, then I wouldn't have had to press charges on him. He had the whole day to turn the synth over to Chevrus. But instead, the moment I came up and blocked Chevrus's line of sight, he took the opportunity to sell it off. Yep, he made the wrong choice. Even though the right choice was right there in front of him. But you knew they wouldn't make the right choice. Yeah, I knew. I was just hoping I'd be wrong for once. Eh. <laughs> Enough about that, though. What did you want to ask me about? Oh, you see, it's like this. The Two Musketeers. You certainly have a good eye for a story. So what do you need me to do? Just be the action choreographer for the actors? Yes, that's right. I want to make sure we get all the details right. I want the actor's posture and understanding of firearms to be as realistic as possible. However, I'm afraid this work will require a bit of your time, since you'll have to be present whenever we're filming. Also, as for the pay... No need to say any more. I'll join. Huh? Just like that? Really? You're willing to help us with our humble film project? Sure, it's no big deal. As I said, we've wrapped up our investigation here, so I don't have any other tasks on my plate for the moment. Besides, I personally really like this novel. I even have the collector's edition at home. Stories where justice prevails over evil never get old for me. Then we've got a deal? Yes, I'll see you on set tomorrow. Oh my! I can hardly believe it! I should tell Lady Farina immediately. Oh, and I must tell the prop manager and lighting technician to get everything ready! We start filming tomorrow! Calm down, Xavier. The film is going to take more than just a day to finish. Still, I should also head back now and start preparing the actors' costumes and makeup. Alright, guess that's it for today then! Traveler, Paimon, please stay for a moment. I have something to tell you. Then I'll take Xavier back. Poor thing. He's so excited that he can't even walk straight anymore. <sighs> I don't want to spend our first day fishing our producer out of the fountain. He'd better. you want to tell us, Chevres? Have you read The Two Musketeers? The story is about a pair of children born into the household of a baron and their struggle to survive together and take revenge for their mother. They were raised at the Baron's estate, where their mother worked as a maid. 
the two were illegitimate children that the Baron had with the maid, so they were never treated well by anyone. One day, upon returning home, they found their mother had been murdered and left dead on the floor. It was quite evident that the culprits were the other members of the Baron's household, who never had any kind words to say to them. However, the Baron was able to exert his influence and keep the whole thing under wraps. The mother's death was eventually deemed as a suicide, and there was no chance of bringing her murderers to justice. The two siblings decided to flee and someday avenge their mother. Many years later, members of the Baron's family suddenly started turning up dead one after the other, all killed by gunshot. A rainbow rose was found on each of the victims' bodies, being the flower that the kid's mother liked best. The Baron believed that the mother's soul had come to take vengeance on him, so he lived in fear each day. But it was actually those two siblings who had fled all those years ago. They relied on each other to survive and trained day and night, eventually becoming adept musketeers. They used all of their abilities to collect evidence and clues before executing their plan and exacting revenge on the Baron. Their actions let the truth behind their mother's death be known to all. That's quite an exhilarating story. Yep, the Baron got what he deserved for his evil deeds, and justice was able to prevail. It was just the kind of story I enjoy. Oh, so is that why you were so willing to join our crew, Chevras? You could say it was one of the reasons. Oh, you mean there were other reasons too? I've read the reports about you. Whether it was at the trials, or when you lent your hand to resolve our nation's crisis, you've shown that you've got a strong sense of justice, as well as a great mind for deductions. Yes, you're as sharp as I expected. It seems you've experienced many similar situations before. There's been a recent murder case involving muskets. The perpetrator's methods appear to be very similar to what is described in the novel. Huh? Really? But Paimon didn't see anything about that in today's papers. The Marachose Phantom hasn't yet released any information to the public, because the investigation is currently at a standstill. The murderer is extremely cautious. A murder involving firearms? But not that many people use those in Fontaine, right? Impossible. We perform a routine inspection of our firearms and ammo reserves every day. If one of the weapons had been fired, it would stick out like a sore thumb. Besides, I trust the members of my platoon. However... Well, that's all I can disclose about the case today. Huh? What do you mean? I hope you all can go back and get some shut-eye. You can decide tomorrow whether or not you'd like to join the investigation with me. I'm aware this might not be the ideal time to add more to your plate, but... The more capable people we have, the better the chances that justice will prevail. Carrying out investigations isn't actually supposed to be our responsibility. Our job is to apprehend the perpetrators. Finding them is really up to the Marachose Phantom. You could say I'm taking part in the investigation out of personal interest. I don't want people to see muskets in a negative way, and also, I'm concerned about the similarity between the crimes and the story. You mean, they might be connected somehow? I suspect so. Just to make myself clear, this is not an order, nor is it a deal of any kind. It's a request, nothing more. If you two have any interest in the case after we finish filming tomorrow and are willing to assist me, then I would be most grateful. What do you think, Traveler?
Dad's getting a little tired, too. We've really been hustling all day. You'd better head back and get some rest. It's good to keep a calm mind, especially when you're about to make an important decision. Otherwise, when the moment comes, you might end up like that shopkeeper and not even realize that the right choice is right there in front of you. time with the Spina has taught me that carrying an unreliable weapon is worse than not carrying one at all.
Love spinach. Thank you for coming. Abyssosk.
见。This realm is... Can we play Banker next time? It's finally time to meet up with everyone! Paimon even dreamt of making the film last night! If Paimon remembers right, we're meeting at Hotel de Boer. Let's get going! My time with the Spina has taught me that carrying an unreliable weapon is worse than not carrying one at all. Spina di Rosula's logo. It was designed by my mother. Have you noticed how it's shaped like a heart? A blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems.
take off. <laughs> hey there! Whirling snow! Coming, Santa Lodge! Take off. Ha. 
I do love Spina di Rosula's logo. Yeah. It was designed by my mother. Have you noticed how it's shaped like a heart? A blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems. Love Spina di Rosula's logo. It was designed by my mother. Have you noticed how it's shaped like a heart? I've always thought that it's important to appreciate the beauty in the world. The blossoms in the spring, summers by the sea, the smiles on your friends' faces. You shouldn't take those things for granted. A blade embraces its duty.
Do not overdo it!
never feel it. A blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems. Uh, I really want to go traveling. I don't mind where we go, as long as I have my friends with me. <laughs> here is wonderful. <laughs> I've landed the perfect job.
much remains unfinished. on my list is really far away.
Blade is like a tea leaf. Only those who sample it many times can appreciate its true qualities. Hey there! Life could be as leisurely as this a little more often. <laughs> How greedy of me. A blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems. Blade is like a tea leaf. Only those who sample it many times can appreciate its true qualities. Why do new explorers make the same mistakes over and over again? Blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems. So this is a day in the life of the traveler. <laughs> I do I'm learning love more about you all the time. Logo. It was designed by my mother. Have you noticed how it's shaped like a heart? Uh, 
Why do new explorers make the same mistakes over and over?